Okay, good morning guys. What I want to try and cover today, and then give you a chance to, to try it yourself, I want to talk about where have you got to get to before you start doing the dot points for a, for a particular topic. When you're writing them, what do you do? And then, importantly, over the course of the next six months, when you're reviewing them, how do you go about doing that? Okay. And the three things are related because you can't really write them until you've done the first step. When you're writing them, you need to keep in mind how are you going to use these. Okay. The, the purpose of the whole dot point thing is simply to enable you to take control of your learning and your preparation for all the theory exams. Okay. The theory exams are defined by the dot points. So if you ask the question, what's going to be on the exam, I just point to those. Clear? All right. So we have wave properties here. Uh, we have just effectively finished that chapter, the, the wave properties topic. So we're in a good spot to be able to do the dot points, or should be, to do the dot points here. But before you go there, you need to make sure that you understand the work. Okay? You need to make sure that you understand the topics and that you can do the questions before you start to write the dot points. That's the coursework. Okay? If you try and do the dot points before you understand something, or while you don't understand something, while there's something missing from the coursework, then it's going to be the blind leading the blind. You're not going to know that you're making errors with the dot points because you don't understand the work properly. Does that make sense? So that's the first thing. All right? In this case, we've only finished this yesterday. So I would do the section reviews and the chapter reviews before I even started looking at these and see have I got the understanding of this right. Yes? So who's done all the section reviews and chapter reviews for chapter 16? One? <coughs> okay. All right. That's really your task before you get serious about these dot points. Okay. Keep in mind what the purpose of the dot points are. They're to enable you to prepare for an exam in six months' time. All right? To get to be at the right place in six months' time does not involve cramming five months away, or uh, well like five months from now, a month before the exam. It involves what you do today. How well you do in September is determined by what you do today on the 13th of February. Okay? Because that's going to set you up for the final preparations that you're going to do in a couple of weeks before the exams. If you haven't done this work up to a couple of weeks before the exam and you try and cram three terms work into study for an exam, then the wheels are going to fall off your little trot. Okay. So keep in mind that's the purpose. All right. When we're um, when we're writing the the Dot point summaries. Always be guided by the purpose of them. The purpose of writing the dot point summaries is not to have a great dot point book. It is to prepare you for the exam. So you've got to keep asking that question. You've got to look forward six months away. What will be useful in one month, two months, three months, four months, six months? Okay. What from this I'm really, I'm really fresh on wave properties at the moment. I really, I'm, I'm good with that. How can I stay good with that for six months? What are the essential bits that we have to carry forward? Okay. So, let's just have a quick look. We, I won't do writing things, but let's just have a quick look. The first couple 
I uh, just recall that waves transfer energy. We'll skip that one for a moment. We'll come back to it when we start writing the dot points. The second one is define the term mechanical wave. Okay. So what do I mean about keep the purpose in mind? Well, I know in six months' time, I'm going to have to give a definition of a mechanical wave. Right? And as my notes say, no, as my notes don't say in this one, wherever you have the <coughs> word define in a dot point, if the term you have to define is given in the glossary, the QCAA says, learn that definition. Okay. Mechanical wave is given in, a, in the syllabus glossary. So on an exam, if they ask you to define a mechanical wave, they're expecting you to get that. So you learn that. If, if the dot point says explain or describe or something else, no, you don't have to, you're not tied to that definition. But when it says define, then base your thing on the definition. Now, when you're doing this, when you're doing this, keep the purpose in mind. When I'm doing this dot point, what's the purpose? In six months time, I've got to be able to define mechanical wave. So I do up my dot point. But I also grab a flash card and I put mechanical wave on this side and put the definition on the other side and I put that in my pile. Because I know I'm going to have to learn that. Yes? Does that make sense? So think not only of completing the page for the dot point, but how am I going to learn it? What's the purpose of this exercise? Yes? Okay, now, Don, what were you going to say? Uh, how closely do we need to um, read? I, I just learned it word perfect. Word for word? Yeah. If it's a definition. If it's, word, if it's clumsily worded, you might tidy it up a bit, but I'd stick, when it says define, I'd stick closely to what they write. Okay. So, got the idea? Don't go into this exercise just thinking, I need to create this great notebook. Because that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to be ready for an exam in six months' time. Clear? Okay. Um, so, let's have a look at some of them. We'll come back to how do you review it afterwards. Okay. I'm videoing this, so if you want to, you can have a look at it later or over the weekend, just refresh. Right. I would suggest <coughs> we work together on a few today. Um, I just showed a few different examples, and then you try it on the weekend, and if you want to, you can show me on Monday or Tuesday, and we can, um, I can give you some feedback on what you've done. Is that clear? Is that fair enough? Okay. All right. So... First one, recall that waves transfer energy is probably the simplest dot point you will ever see. All right. What would I expect? Well, for, ma for many of these dot points, I would expect that you leave a whole page. But for ones like this, I wouldn't. I'd put dot point 2.2.1a, uh, recall that waves transfer energy, and 2.2.1b, define the term mechanical wave, probably on the same page, just to where you can to uh, avoid running out of pages. Okay. Um, but most of them, and I'll explain why as we get into these, most of them I would say give it a whole page because you can do diagrams, you can add to it when you come back and you're reviewing it, you can flesh it out a bit. All right. So I'm expecting you to see 2.2.1a. In your handwriting, <coughs> recall that waves transfer energy. Now, in this case, with that dot point, I wouldn't go any further. Because all you've got to do is recall that waves transfer energy. So, in six months' time, what else do I need? waves transfer energy. It says, remember the notes are my comments to you. So the notes on these pages are me talking to you. A straightforward do a dot point. Recalling an example of a wave transferring energy would be useful. Okay, so you could put 
For example, what? Yeah, probably easier to say uh, being dumped at the beach by an ocean wave transfers energy to you. Um, a seismic wave transfers energy to buildings miles away. You know, those sort of things. So maybe just put an example. <coughs> Let's go to dot point 2.2.1b to find the term mechanical wave. Now, as you'll notice, each of these dot point pages, we've tried to keep exactly the same format. Dot point up the top, glossary items from the syllabus. The notes are my comments to you. And then I've put the textbook references and I've just dumped in any diagrams or things that might be helpful. And not now, but later in the course, we'll put in sample questions. Okay. Um, they're from the sample papers, so that's units three and four. So what I would do with one like this is it's to find the term mechanical wave. Okay. So you start at the dot point. Why am I suggesting very strongly that you do this in your own handwriting, physically on paper? Why am I suggesting that, Dom? Uh, better chance of memorizing it. The research shows very clearly that you learn things better if you handwrite them. Um, it's got to do with the um, uh, the senses, the fact that uh, you know you. There's physicality, the brain has to actually move your hand. Um, but also it's got to do with the fact that handwriting slows you down. If you're doing it on a computer, you are more likely to, control C, control V. And that means it doesn't actually go through your brain. The information doesn't go through your brain. When you write it, it slows you down. You have to actually think about the words and it gives you some reflection. Okay. The studies are quite clear. You perform better when you take notes in class when you work pen and paper rather than on a computer. Okay. Um, the other thing that happens is you do tend, on a computer, you do tend to take things when you're control pasting. Um, you do tend to take somebody else's words. When you're taking your own notes, you do tend to put it in your own words because it makes it shorter. And that processing is helpful as well. So define the term mechanical wave. All right. Um, here, uh, the notes say if the physical substance that a mechanical <coughs> wave needs is called the medium. The medium of a water wave is the ocean. The medium of a sound wave is the air, or the gas, liquid, or solid through which it moves. So that's just that's what it means by medium in this definition. Okay. Haven't put medium up there in the glossary. So I've explained it to you in the notes. All right. Define the term mechanical wave. Well, a mechanical wave, the definition says, requires a medium to propagate. Okay, where do we go with that? I'd write that. I would write the medium is a, the thing it travels through. For example, water. And I'd define propagate. What does propagate mean? Travel. To travel. Okay. Yes? And then, because it's a define, it's something I need to actually be able to recall, I would do a flash code. Put in the pot. Okay. If it was a dot point that I had to describe or explain, I might write a question 
on the flashcard and leave the other side blank and put it in the pile. You know, if it was describe or explain, where there's not a, a complete definition that you need to learn, you can still write a question before you move on. Yes, Ron? Should we be doing this once we finish like, the whole wave properties thing or as we go? Through? No, once you finish that topic, right. you shouldn't do this until you've finished that topic and done the chapter reviews and so on. That's what I was saying before. You need to really understand this whole thing before you go to this. All right. When you do come to this, bring to it a number of things. Bring to it all your resources. When you're working on this, right, and that might be the dot point for that one, dot. But when you're working on this, what are you using? You're using what you know and understand. So you're using your memory. You would also use, that is, you'd look at the text section that's referred to. So you'd have that open in front of you. Have a look at it, see if there's any diagrams or anything. Diagrams are always much handier to study from then. Lots of text. Okay. What else would you have in front of you? Well, you got the one. Uh, you got the one note, obviously. <coughs> You've got your class notes, okay? And if your class notes aren't clear on it, then you've got the PowerPoint from class on Moodle, okay? So you're sitting at your desk. You've got textbook class notes. One note open, you're working on your dot point pad, and you're bringing this to be. Making sense of it, and you're asking yourself, what do I need in six months' time? Does that make sense? Okay. So, probably nothing more than that at the moment for that dot point. But that's one I'd. Yeah, I'd leave that, I'd, I'd leave a bit of room, just in case you want to come back to it later on and flesh it out. Okay. Questions? Okay. So let's go to the next one. Compare the term, sorry, Ned. Um, with these topics, do we have like one book for each topic or put them all in one? No, one book for physics. One book for physics and like all the top points for that. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this later on, but if you've got a book like this, right, I would then go to Officeworks or something and get tags so that I could see this is waves, this is electricity, this is so and so. You know? And you can quickly go to whatever section you want. Yes? Okay. You can get big tags and little tags. <coughs> And then you could change them around, you could color code them, get organized and all that sort of stuff. Right? Just don't spend all your time doing the office works runs and reorganizing tabs and so on and not actually studying it. Okay. Um, no, one book for physics. Yep. Okay? And one of these, or one of the soft bound ones, um, will be enough. There's, you know, in year 12 there's 150 dot points or something. 200. 100 or something pages, or there's 86 dot points, 100 pages, or something. I've checked it out. You know? Most notebooks will work. All right? Yeah. Okay, um, so let's look at the third one. Compare the terms transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Well, here, when you're doing the dot point, uh, you've got the two definitions. Uh, my notes say learn the direction of motion of the particles of the medium in relation to the direction of propagation of the waves. Know at least one example of each type. And then where I put the textbook references, I put diagrams that might be good to draw in your own notes. Okay? So you show what a, what a, um, a longitudinal and a transverse wave look like, as well as define them in terms, in words. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what you will find, and this is one of the reasons why I suggest 
that you, for these later dot points, you leave a whole page, even if you're only using the top half at the start. Get down to here, this one, like, describe the reflection and refraction of a wave at a boundary between two media. And I've just, for some of these dot points, I've put an asterisk at the end. The asterisk just means you're going to do this again in a later dot point. Or you're going to come across it again in a later dot point. Okay? Um, so, yeah, you can do it now, but when we study light, you're probably going to want to add to this. Does that make sense? Um, and you don't always, you won't always find the asterisk on there. So that's why I say just leave a page for each dot point regardless and when you do later units you may come back and add some more in so that you understanding's better at that point. Yes? Okay. Now, any questions about what you put in the dot point summary? The only thing that has to go in, as it is on this one note, is of course the dot point. If there are defined terms, then maybe you put those in as they are, word for word. But the rest of it is guidance to you on how do you answer this question? What do I need for this dot point in six months time? Does that all make sense? Okay, so I'd like to get on to, and you might want to watch this video again in a month's time for this part of it. I want to get on to how do you use this once you've done it? Okay, the idea is that if you, um, if you have a good dot point notebook, that's what you study from for the exams. Okay. That's what you study from because that's what defines the exam. So how do you then use it? Well, the first thing is don't leave it sit in a drawer. You need to be reviewing the dot points. on a regular basis. But there's some ways of doing this that are better than others. Um, and what I'm going to put up here is the result of research in education, psychology and neuroscience that uh, a group out of the University of Queensland have done over the last few years. Um, and uh, basically looking to how do we learn things best. Okay. Um, first thing is that the reviews need to be spaced out. If you want to learn something, half an hour every day for three days or four to, or six days is better than three hours all in one block. Okay. So I would suggest, I would strongly suggest, maybe you get into a routine where all things being equal, Sunday evening or whatever is your dot point reviewing time. Or Sunday morning or whatever it happens to be. Pick, pick one time each week and say, okay, that's my dot point reviewing time. All right? <coughs> um, spaced out regularly is much better than all at once. Okay. Um, secondly, I would suggest that um, you mix up the order each time you review it. Each time you review your physics dot points, don't start at the first page and go through to page 50. Right. Sometimes do wave properties first, sometimes do sound first, sometimes do light first. Um, would the idea be that in those half hour sessions, if you get through like one chunk, or would you get through all of them? Oh, you might get through one chunk, or you might get through okay. six or seven, it depends. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll talk about what we actually do in those times in a minute. But 
mix up the order. Okay? Otherwise, you'll be really well prepared on wave properties and you will always run out of time on light. Yes? Okay. Um, also, when you get into the course, mix up the topics. Don't do all the dot points from light and then all the dot points from sound. Mix them up. Do two or three dot points from light and do two or three dot points from sound. Okay. The research is very clear that if you are changing from one topic to another, it is much better exam preparation than doing all of one topic and then all of the other topic. Because on the exam, you don't have all of one topic and then all of the other topic. They come thick and fast. Yes? So the actual mental act of switching from one topic to another actually aids recall. All right. Um, so, now, at each review session, what do you do? Any ideas? What do you think is the worst thing you can do? The least effective way of reviewing your dot points? Lucky? Just sit there and read it. Sit there and read it. Okay. If you sit there and read them, or even if you sit there and copy them all out again, that's the same as sitting there with the book closed in terms of prep for an exam. Okay. The review must be active and it must involve recall, not recognition. Active recall, not recognition, is the key. Okay. So I'm looking at the dot points, I'm just recognising them. If I have the dot point book open and I see the dot point is to find the term mechanical wave. And I walk away and I say, well, a mechanical wave is a wave that requires a medium to propagate. That is active recall. I have brought it to mind without being able to see it or hear it or read it. Yes? Active recall is what you're using when you use flashcards. Mechanical wave, a wave that requires a medium to propagate. No? So trying to answer it before you look at the answer is using active recall. Active recall is the way to go. It's what's effective. Okay? So there are a number of ways you can do active recall. One is what I just said. If I was doing this, I'd have a bit of cardboard. And I'd put it over the page just showing the dot point. And then I'd walk away from it and say, can I do this? Right? So there's two important parts to active recall like this. This is actually how I used to study it from <coughs> when I was at uni 100 years ago. Um, I'd put the book on my desk, I'd see the topic, I'd cover the detail, I'd walk away. In those days we didn't have whiteboards, I had a blackboard in my room and I'd suggest you get a whiteboard in your room if you're serious about studying. Um, walk away from it so you're not tempted to look at it, say all right. Um, I need to recall X, Y, and Z. So I just do a quick sketch on the board or talk it through. And then I go back, and this is the second key part. You've got to check. What have you missed from what you had on the, the dot point? Okay. Oh, missed that. Right, go back. Now, let's do it again. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Do I get everything? Yep. Okay. Move on, next dot point. So there's a number of ways you can do active recall. Um, one is to, um, well, um, flashcards, that sort of method. Um, what I'd call explain and check. Right? What I just did, walk away, explain it to somebody imaginary in your head. Go back and check. Um, there's other ways you can do it. Write a summary. That's slower. All right. The key, the key to learning things is always repetition. The more times you cover the material, the better. Um, writing summaries suits some people, but don't write it from the text. 
you have to look at the dot point, go away, write a summary. Now, my only problem with that is I write slowly, so I'm only going to get one repetition in. But if I'm saying it out loud, I can get more repetitions in, because it's quicker. And there's another neat thing about saying it out loud. I'm sure you have all read books or even been writing things and find yourself thinking about something else. And you think, oh, I've got to get back to this. Right? It is, I will, I will challenge you, I have found it absolutely impossible for my mind to drift while it's in the act of speaking. Okay? While you are physically speaking, I don't mean talk, talk in your mind to yourself in your room. No, I mean speak it out loud. Okay? When I was at school, we had other young children in the house who had to speak very quietly at 11.30 at night, but I spoke it out loud. And if you speak it out loud, your mind simply can't drift off to something else. The verbal centres, the language centres of the, the brain are all tied up in getting your mouth to work. So speak it out loud, I think, is a better... way of doing it. I haven't seen any research on that, I just know from my own experience that you can speak it out loud and you don't drift off. Okay? But if I sit down to write something out, or to read it, I'll be thinking about six other things by the time I'm supposed to have finished reading that. Okay? Um, so they're the, main, they're the main things about what you should review, but the key thing <coughs> is to make it active. And that's the mistake guys sometimes make, is they do passive review, like reading or looking at it or recognising and so on. And it's really a waste of time. Okay? Worst, worst thing you can do is sit down and read a textbook in terms of studying. In terms of getting your head around the original ideas when you're working on the coursework, that can help. Because the textbook can provide you with a perspective that you didn't see in class. You know? So when you're trying to nut something out, that can help, but not when you're trying to study it. When you're trying to study it, you've got to be, I believe you've got to be, now this is just me, but I believe you've got to be on your feet and you've got to be active. Okay? That's why I've got whiteboards around the place. So the guys in the afternoon tutorials and so on can get up and start doing things. And when you've got to learn stuff, you've got to be active. Okay. Questions? All right, let's review. Before you start to do the dot points for a section, what have you got to do? Where have you got to be? Hey. You have to know and understand. You have to know and understand what you're talking about. Okay? So, in other words, you've done the coursework, you've done the problems, you can understand the questions, you can... You've got the, you've got the topic, you've got mastery of it. Okay? When you go to write them, you're going to use the advice on here, but what is the overriding question when you when you're writing a dot point summary? What is the overriding question? What do I need in six months', well, in six months time from this? Okay, because while it's all fresh in my mind at the moment, it's not going to be in six months' time. So you've got to keep asking yourself, what do I need in six months' time? Now, just be careful with that. When, when guys ask me, what do I need in a summary? How much do I need in a summary? My standard answer would be, you need what's necessary, but no more. So always try for conciseness. If you can show something in a flow chart or a diagram dry, diagrammatically, that would otherwise require two paragraphs of writing, show it in the diagram. Make your dot point summaries as simple as they can be but not so simple they're not useful in six months time okay that'll take some practice all right you'll do some where you write too much and you'll do others where you miss bits out okay hopefully practice tests and things like that will help you identify if you've missed things out yes 
If you write too much, it's just going to take you too long to review it. Okay, so that's before you start, when you're doing it, afterwards, what's the key to studying? What's the key to reviewing it? Active recall. Active recall. <coughs> it has to be active recall. Okay. Now you can work out a dozen different ways of doing active recall, but active recall is the key. Does all that make sense? Okay, let's leave it there then.